bedroom. Ow. A lot of commercial furniture is an obstacle. Is this Cubist or? We fill our boxes with little boxes from bigger boxes and wonder why the time lapse of life moving through our space feels more like a game of Tetris and less like the flow of water. The movement of life should be a river, not an obstacle course. A river? A table. River? A table. Not the kind of river table you're probably thinking of. I'm not so much inspired by the canyon, but rather the smooth, lazy, peaceful river. A steady laminar current around a perfect little island. The river island. The River Island Table, Part 1, Water Drop Case. It's been a little minute, but we're back. This video does not have a sponsor, but is made possible by the support of Sawyer Design Patreon members and those of you who have purchased a shirt or set of plans. In order to bring this vision to life, I decided to divide the water drop case into halves, which would be joined later to achieve the desired shape. With intricate CAD models as my guide, I turned to my buddy's CNC machine and ultralight MDF templates. This turned out to be a really bad idea and we'll soon see why. I then traced and iterated the templates to complete the bending form. Good things take time. The best things in my experience, start with bending a little wood. Hey yo. My name is Nick Sawyer, a furniture maker out of Portland, Oregon. I've been called a lot of things, but fast has never made that list. So here we are, three months or 960 hours of design and woodworking later, and I've created, and on several occasions ruined or nearly catastrophically destroyed, a very fancy coffee table. A pair of them, actually. And I want to do something a little different on this build because, honestly, I want to get down and nerdy with you and try slowing things down. Regular viewers will know that I'm sort of a glutton for punishment, so brace yourself because this table is all about curves. Straight lines have no place here. Fat bottom cabinets make the rockin' world go round. Keeping the bending form square has been sort of a challenge for me in the past, so I included this little lip to make sure there was a straight reference instead of just eyeballing it, and that worked out really well. Completing a loop in anything wood is pretty difficult, and the Lance Lloyd or bent teardrop shape of this table I decided would be more easily executable by cutting that shape in half and then joining the two halves later. As you might imagine, all of this MDF adds up pretty quickly in weight. Combined with an awkward shape like this, I decided to put some handholds in using the Shaper Origin. And this made lifting quite a bit easier, but it may have introduced a weak spot in the form. For now, let's put the forms aside and get on to my favorite part that makes all this setup pay off. Bent lamination. For the structure of the case, I chose Italian Bending Poplar, also known as Bendy Ply. Unlike me and hardwood, this material has no memory or internal stress, making it an incredibly strong and stable substrate for veneering. Now let me reintroduce you to the fastening world of vacuum pressing. At the bottom of the press, we have a platen, a grid of grooves that help dissipate the air volume within the bag. On top, there's another platen to distribute the load evenly along with a breather mesh to evacuate any trapped air pockets. With the convex side complete and following the same process, I can tackle the concave thick boy. Oh. 
Wrapping the form in wax paper, plastic wrap, or freezer paper keeps the laminations fresh and prevents spoiling in the fridge. In stride with most projects, I really wasn't kind to my future self in this design and decided that this super complicated shape needed some even more complicated curves on the curves because I want to make it extra thick with three C's. To maximize juiciness and reproduce the model's lines accurately, a template is created from reference points on a flattened 2D layout of the 3D model. After transferring the layout, the shape is roughed out on the bandsaw and the curves are fared down to the layout using a spoke shave and my two little eyeballs. Once smooth, I can take these templates to the case sides and transfer the shape to the surface. It's easier to first get the surface veneered before cutting that shape out of the hole. And the species choice here is a very special and beautiful selection of curly Australian walnut. The curly Australian walnut came from Certainly, and it smells just a little bit like feet. Don't worry though, the foot smell should go away with finish. I hope. Luckily, there's no smell meter feature on YouTube yet, so we'll just pretend I didn't mention it. Anyways, to achieve a seamless join between the two halves of the case, I opted for a book match layout on the veneer, carefully masking the join. Tracksaw works great for breaking down veneer, and a veneer saw is my weapon of choice for the fine-tuned seaming. I've tried a little of every glue, and while urea formaldehyde is a joy to work with, neither urea nor formaldehyde are on the list of ways to live a long, happy life. So I've decided just to stick with epoxy on most things because it tastes better, forms a rigid glue line, and doesn't allow the veneers to scoot over time. It's also not guaranteed to give me cancer like the brown stuff. Epoxy also has the added bonus of being loved by moms on the internet everywhere. And just like before, skinny swoopy side first, after which, because I love repeating myself, we'll do the fat side. Wait, why did you, what was that tone all about? Why did you, why'd you play it like, why'd you play it like that? Boy, that was creepy. Anyway, back to what I was saying, now that the curvy skinny one's done, we'll rinse, lather, and repeat on the fat one. I attribute a lot of my leaden pace to measured decisions on execution for the exact reason of not having to redo things. Slow, smooth, smooth as fast. Despite my thoughtfulness, shit does occasionally hit the fan, and that's life. So what happened? What I think happened is a combination of things. First, my CNC template, the one that caved way on the outside of the form, that was cut from ultralight MDF, a material I haven't used before. Evidently, they don't cut weight with carbon fiber, and this combined with my thrifty blocking internally, and those handholds that introduced a weak spot in the panel, all came together to make this a very stressful recovery as epoxy was beginning to set up. Couple takeaways here, always use glue with a longer open time than necessary and overbuilding early and often helps future cortisol levels. Ended up having to start again on the fat side, but I'll spare you and save the tedium of reliving that for my therapist, that poor lady. Poor, poor, bored out of her mind lady. Anyways, the case laminations were oversized or overlinked just a little bit and I need to figure out where exactly they land on the final shape. This is where the arrows cut into the CNC templates really came in handy as references for the start and stop and made the layout easy enough. Cutting them was a whole nother story. And I had to get creative with my work holding to figure out how to hold them in place as well as a track to trim these with my track saw.
Once resolved, it's back to the templates to cut out the sloping shape on the laminations. Convex surfaces can be really difficult to cut on the bandsaw, so I devised an improved 3D support fixture that provides a little more control and accuracy in the cut. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Get it right, the speed will come naturally. All things I try to convince myself that working on something for this long is going to be worth it. It's a weird thing, pushing your skills without instruction. We spend our lives learning from others, so it's an interesting shift and kind of exhilarating to figure it out on your own. Definitely more rewarding. Every project I design seems to have a handful of techniques and parts that I have no clue how to execute. There's a hundred ways to do anything and many are correct. Some, however, are more correct than others and the order of operations is absolutely critical. If you're interested in learning how to design and execute more custom pieces, I'll toss a quick plug here to my first set of plans in the description and email sign up for my newsletter to be notified when the video design and project courses are available later this year. Everyone who signs up will be entered to win a Q5 platinum spray system from one of my industry partners, Fuji Spray. All the details are in the description and I personally will email the winner 30 days after the conclusion of this series. With the case complete, it's onto the sunburst teardrop top and sunrise tambor doors. You can watch that here if it's up or stay tuned as I have these scheduled to drop weekly. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace.